Welcome to Scorched Earth and a general reading for the sign of Capricorn, Sun, Moon or Ascendant for the month of March 2024. I hope you're well. We're using the uh, Tarot of the Abyss for you today and apologies for these being late. Some, you know, life stuff to do. Anyway, before we begin, if the reading resonates with you and you would like to go a little bit deeper, there will be an extended that's available at the end. That's the first link in the description box. Second link in the description box is to my private community. That's the Order of the Phoenix over on the Circle platform. You can get access to all of the extended content, no matter what it is, um, for no extra cost beyond the membership fee. And uh, hang out with a really extraordinary group of people. We've got quite a bit going on over there. So if that sounds like it might be of interest to you, do please avail yourself of that link. And also, um, I've done three months overviews uh, for each of the signs running from April to June, covering what does promise to be some fairly tumultuous energy. Um, if you're interested in that, that's the third link down there. Now, uh, Capricorn. Let's have a look and see what's going on with you. Could I have three cards for Capricorn, please? Well, that's the first one. Let's just flip it around. We have the Two of Pentacles in your recent past. Current energy for Capricorn, please. Oh, goodness. Nine of Cups. And what about what's coming towards Capricorn for the rest of March? We have the Tower. Right. Ace of Cups is at the bottom of the deck, though. So, I mean, this could well be a very positive Tower. The only thing that I would say about that is intuitively, I feel like this tower is based on things possibly not going quite the way that you had anticipated. It's pushing you through into something else. Um, but let's get some clarifiers on the table before I say any more. I'm gonna give these a quick shuffle as well. Just to make sure we're doing the things. So tell me about the two of pentacles, please. We have Magician and the Knight of Pentacles. Tell me about the Nine of Cups. Goodness. Seven of Pentacles. And the Death card. Tell me about the Tower, please. What is this here for? Nice. Right. We have the Devil coming up sideways and we have the King of Cups coming up sideways. And I think for most of you, this is revolving around the idea of relationships. Now, before you jump to any conclusions and assume that I mean, you know, your most intimate sexual relationships, you know, your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your they friend, whatever. Um, that isn't what this card represents. It re represents all relationships that are in some way meaningful to you. So they are friendships. They are relationships with your family. They can some, sometimes, in some instances, be uh, business partnerships. And, um, you know, you must take it as it resonates to you because not every Capricorn will have it, um, you know, acting in every area of their life. It does put the emphasis on not just the way that uh, <clears throat> you are experiencing these relationships, but also in how it is that you're showing up in them. And what it is that's being reflected back to you. The Two of Cups for me is a card that speaks about intimacy and how it is being experienced by all the parties involved. I, and uh, let's just see what's underneath there. We've got the Hierophant. There's a likely long-standing relationships that have, you know, some significance in your life. Not necessarily someone, I, I would think, very less likely that it would be someone who has just tipped up recently, right? So, um these could no let's just stick with that actually let's let's just stick with where it is um because the two of cups is also talking about whether two people are on the same page or not generally two of cups indicates that it, that that is the case but if this is your awareness of it or at least your understanding of it versus what it may turn out to be later on down the line for the rest of March, as we see here with the Tower card, um, then this is something that's going to need some sort of reassessment, I think. And at this point, it's probably worth um, drawing to your attention that I think it is March the 18th. We have a Mercury retrograde appearing in uh, the sign of Aries. Um, 
that's when the shadow period begins. The retrograde itself then, following two weeks after, for a period of two weeks, that's when we'll be in peak retrograde energy. And then we'll have a wind down period for another two weeks. So essentially covering the, from halfway through the month, we've got that energy building up, <coughs> excuse me, over the rest of March. Then basically the whole of April, you've got two weeks retrograde and you've got two weeks post retrograde shadow. So this is something worth bearing in mind because if relationships are something that are showing up high on the agenda for you in terms of what you are dealing with at the moment then it could well be that there's some ground that needs to be gone back over in order for breakthroughs to occur and we hope at this point we hope that it is breakthroughs um, but we will see so we start with the recent past and we have the two of pentacles there that is actually a capricorn card and it's one to which I usually ascribe the meaning of coping. Um, I've come to that because in the traditional Waite Smith tarot, it's one of those cards that's depicted as um, being on stage. Right? Pamela Coleman Smith was a set designer for, uh, for the theatre. We've got another one of these here with the Two of Cups. And it lends this kind of performative aspect to the assessment of whatever this contains. Now, obviously, this is not Pamela Coleman Smith's depiction of the Two of Pentacles, but we still have that same underlying meaning. Oh, underlying meaning. And is it the same? I'm not sure that it is. It seems to suggest that you are working to one purpose and somebody else is working to another. And the extent to which either of you are aware of that at this point may be slightly up for discussion let's put it that way I'm not sure it's being discussed and that's why it's not really readily available but all of the cards that are number two for me speak about the very internal awareness right it's internal decision making or it's internal exploration of uh, consequence it's internal um, experience of intimacy and and to you know to what extent that's happening and the two of pentacles is the you know the job at hand quite frankly and your experience of it versus what is going on now we've got the magician under there and we've got the knight of pentacles and so it seems to me that things feel like they are moving very well they're moving in the right direction or at least they have been the magician is a card of manifestation because he combines all of the tools that he has here on his table, which are, you know, all of the elements. So you've got the Ace of Cups, the Ace of Pentacles, the Ace of Swords, so on and so forth, um, with his will. And it's about the intentional manipulation of the energies of all of those things combined with his will, combined with his intent to bring about a particular set of circumstances. Now, likely you've been putting quite a lot of effort into trying to bring about a particular outcome for yourself, a particular kind of manifestation. And we see it even, you know, we see it here with the Knight of Pentacles. Indicating Virgo, there could be quite a lot of attention to detail that you are doing at the moment in terms of the bigger picture of what it is that you are trying to bring about. Now, this is, generally speaking, a recipe for success for Capricorn. You know, it is the, the fact that you do not miss the little details of things. Now, I once saw some um, uh, astrologer describe um, Capricorn as uh, as a little lacking in the detail, or favouring the bigger picture instead. And I can sort of see where they're coming from with that, um, in terms of the the entirety of the life experience. Let's put it that way. But I think that what it was missing is that in order to be single minded and focused on a goal, right, focused on something that you are trying to bring about, some big um, manifestation of whatever it is, there's a kind of tunnel vision that has you noticing all the detail on the way. Right. So it's it's the it's the implementation of a big vision by way of focusing on the small stuff right on the stuff that really matters en route to what it is that you're trying to do so i feel like you've been investing 
heavily in bringing this about and that's really good and we get to the nine of cups in your present energy and this this really does feel like things are going really rather well for you you know the nine of cups nines talk about the management of whatever suit they represent for me in the way that i read the cards so the nine of cups is about your emotional management at this point and it feels like it's in a good place now the other thing that the nine of cups talks about is uh dreams goals hopes wishes and those being achieved in some sort of way so we have the combination of dedicated effort that you have put in right paying attention to the detail of what you are trying to create and also that end goal which is a very powerful combination actually and um, we have this sense that it feels like it is coming to uh it's all starting to come together we have the seven of pentacles underneath and we have the death card and there are a couple of ways of reading this i mean i feel like i am swaying more towards the former interpretation that i see rather than the latter which is that whatever you're dedicating yourself yourself to it does not necessarily feel like it's a new thing that's just sort of come out of nowhere <clears throat> um rather it's been about the rectification of a situation that you have found to be in some way or another suboptimal so you could say it was sort of fixing it but it, it feels like it's it's what you've recognized to be off and the energy that you've put into fixing that and we have the death card here indicating that there is a transformation of what you consider to be not right in your life right now that is the thing that you've been to working towards right it's very strong here at this point i'm going to pull out the wild unknown because it's it's waving at me from over there <clears throat> and i want to pull a couple of more uh, a couple more cards before i leave that as the interpretation because it is possible and i'm just going to bring this up now it is possible that this is what's going on on the surface and this is what you do not perceive is going on underneath <coughs> excuse me because the death card can bring an abrupt ending to a particular way that we see a situation uh well the way that we're experiencing a situation but also whatever outcome we think we're having from it and the seven of pentacles can be a situation whereby we are potentially contributing to the situation being less than optimal in a way that we have not perceived i would like the wild unknown to create a bit of illumination around what that might be here yeah. we have the eight of swords interesting and we have the Seven of Wands. Tell me about this death card, please. Oof. We have the Four of Cups coming sideways. Now, we have the Emperor card at the bottom of the deck. And generally speaking, this is a really good card of getting your shit together, right? It would be somewhat in alignment with what we've seen with the rest of the cards so far. Which is to say that... <clears throat> Being very focused on what it is that we're trying to bring about, you know, putting all of the effort that is required into bringing that about and generally exercising the energies of an emperor that are fitting for something that we're trying to do. But the, there is no card in the tarot that is all um, strawberries and roses, if I can put it that way, or, or quite the reverse, actually. You know, the, the tarot is a is a subtle art and it's full of nuance and... It runs the spectrum from one side to another. So the other thing that the emperor can speak about is control. The amount of control that is being exerted over a situation. Now I can see where this is starting to tie in with the more positive aspects of what we've seen here. Because you have been very dedicated on the thing. But the question then is, have you become fixated and the reason that i say this is because we have got the eight of swords here and the seven of wands now when the seven of wands appears it is mars in leo and whenever we've got a martian card there is an indication <clears throat> of certain warlike properties you know mars is the god of war and then whenever mars is active mars is cutting and chopping and hacking and just generally warrioring around you know 
and that would be fine but for this seven of pentacles and then correspondingly coming underneath it the eight of swords the eight of swords is a state of mental restriction now in this depiction here we have uh you know we have a butterfly who is you know just ready to emerge but the implication is that it's afraid to unfurl its wings because if it did it would be absolutely torn to shreds by the swords that are all sitting here waiting to chop and hack at it it's um <clears throat> because it's a swords card it deals with what's going on in your mind swords are the suit of reason rationality logic the workings of your mind the things that you say which are you know the expressions of the workings of your mind and it can speak to feeling stuck and trapped and maybe it's even you know coming out swinging because we feel stuck and trapped but the the, the emphasis is on the contraction here and the implication is that maybe things have become a little too single minded right in pursuit of some sort of higher goals that that you might have in any uh, you know in any way that this resonates to you that maybe you've been become fixated on one outcome and one outcome alone now that's problematic because when we shut ourselves off to the possibility of things flowing and you know going going in the way that the universe would like them to go right such that we you know screen off the possibility of doing anything else we do rather line ourselves up for disappointment because the universe knows better than we more often than not and fixation of any sort generally leads to disappointment now the four of cups is on its side here which is interesting when it's in its reverse that re card quite simply just means gratitude to me over you know years of reading tarot that's what that card means it's a state of gratitude and then you know sort of by extension a state of acceptance emotional acceptance of something okay um it, it's foundational as well and this is the important thing to note because it is numbered four it is you know upon which we are basing our emotional decisions and all those kind of things right now when it's in the upright it becomes a little bit more problematic it can talk about abandonment issues it can talk about uh, rejection and fear of rejection it can talk about a kind of hypersensitivity to things not going our way and the way in which we then internalize that as some sort of um, catastrophe a catastrophe for the ego now the fact that the card is coming out sideways I know some people will be flinching but I do read them sideways like that because they feel to me like they have not committed to the energy either way right which is to say this is hanging in the balance somewhat um, because the death card is one that leads although not chronologically it leads energetically quite nicely into the tower sometimes and that is the next card that we see here for march now an examination of these three cards down here we've got a very fixed and rigid mindset right which could be positive could be negative depends what's going on but generally speaking you know the positivity aspect of the eight of swords is in the recognition that the eight of swords is at play that maybe we're not giving ground on something that we should maybe it is um you know a reflection of the amount of control that we're trying to exert over a situation that is making things difficult perhaps inflaming tensions right and putting uh, our emotional foundation at some sort of risk maybe i'll pull out another deck here let's pull out the triple goddess to see if i can track on this tell me about this eight of swords so we have the fool in reverse and we have the three of pentacles and we have the two of swords, uh, two of wands let's uh shuffle these up we have the two of wands at the bottom of this deck now 
we're back to that energy of things hanging in the balance. Like I said, the two is about the internal experience of you know, a reaching a crossroads and, and, and there being a need to decide which way we are going. Like, do we go this way? Do we go that way? We walk through in our minds, in our imagination, the consequences of arriving at that place. What have we lost to get there? What have we gained to get there? What is the cost benefit, benefit analysis of taking one route over another? <clears throat> now, the full card in reverse is, why am I, sometimes reverse cards are delays, right? And, and it could be that there's something that you're trying to delay. But really, when you've got an energy as big as the full, it's shutting down on the possibility of things potentially working out a different way. We've got the Three of Pentacles there, which is um, another Capricorn card, actually, second decan of uh, Capricorn, that is speaking to the way that we we choose to align our efforts to create something that is bigger than the, the, than the sum of its parts. And the sum of its parts is each one of these separate individuals on the card, right? Us being one of them, you being one of them. And so there's a question of here, whether you are either being a little too cooperative or perhaps not cooperative enough. Now that is a question for you, Capricorn. It's not a question that I can answer, but seeing the way that the cards are playing out here and the highly individualized state that we're seeing, I mean, it really is only the three of pentacles. And so that's showing up, up here that speaks to anybody else, particularly in this bit here. The question is, are you trying to exert too much control over a situation? And in doing so, are you stopping the possibility of potential being accessed that takes your situation to a whole new level? Now, when we move into the energies of March specifically, and I do realise we're a little way into March now, um, but we do have a lunar eclipse at the end of this month in the sign of Libra. Uh, I think if you're in the UK, it happens at about four o'clock in the morning or something like that. But it's, uh, and it lasts for an hour and eight minutes, which seems like quite a long time. Anywho, the tower is a sudden, shocking influx of energy that changes the direction that we are following. Now, Regardless of whether the issue is that you're being too amenable or you're not being cooperative enough, and I'm likely going to err on the side of the latter because of the presence of the Eight of Swords, um, and maybe it's even the Seven of Wands in this, in this case. Um, the Tower is not an energy that we want to see in a situation where we are trying to exert some sort of control because this is taking matters out of our hands and it's it's taking us and literally turning us 90 degrees from where we thought we were going, which is Capricorn, Envision, this is where we're going, paying lots of attention to the detail of things. <clears throat> and introducing this kind of uh, uh, curveball energy to what we're experiencing now the tower is in my opinion always positive long term it's always shaking you out of something that you uh that you thought you wanted thought you needed you know a way in which you show up in the world right the the, the way that you express yourself out in the world and it goes it's time for a change it's time for you to evolve it's time for you to go this way instead um and tower moments can range from, and I've had, I've had most of the, uh, um, <coughs> most of the spectrum, simply having a thought whilst washing up, I've done this, where your mind puts two things together that you did not see before, and suddenly the world changes. It looks very, very different. What we're doing looks very different. What we're working towards looks very different. We, the way we see people can change dramatically in those moments. 
you know, it's, and it feels like our mind's done it, but it's, it's a tower moment. Right up to other things that are, you know, what give the tower its rather scary feeling, you know, job losses or in some ways not getting the thing that we wanted that we had invested so highly into. The, the question becomes how much of your identity, how much of your ego, how much of your emotional well-being have you invested in this being the outcome that you wanted? Now this lunar eclipse in Libra is particularly significant because being in the sign of Libra it can speak to matters of justice, it can also speak to um, relationships. And we are, we are seeing that here. Um, but the south node is also currently in Libra, which means that whatever this energy is, and you know, whatever heightened abilities the lunar eclipse has this month to kind of shake us out of a certain state of stagnancy that we put ourselves into accidentally, you can be sure it's going to be taking you, it's, it's going to be powerful and it's going to take you in a different direction. Now, if you were any other sign and this devil had come up here, that would feel a little bit more uncomfortable than it does. Because the devil is a card of Capricorn. It's the only card in the major arcana that really speaks to Capricorn energy. So then when it shows up, we are speaking about matters of identity, right? what it is to be a Capricorn, the certain attributes of Capricorn. right? The, uh, the devil uh, has dominion over the material world. right? And uh, Capricorns innately understand the necessity for being very engaged in bringing around material resources to themselves, right? It's about stability and security and all these sorts of things. The problem comes with the fact that the devil isn't in the upright. He isn't even in the reverse either, actually, because we could see positive and negative things for both of those. What we've got is a state of, I would say, uncertainty perhaps disbelief, I, I, I feel that word, disbelief, that things have happened, and it's probably not really a strange word to associate when it's coming out underneath the tower, right? And a sense of your, what has been your emotional foundation in terms of what it is that you've invested in, getting rocked in some sort of way. Now, we can see from the Ace of Cups being at the bottom of the deck here, that there's something about this experience that is actually attempting to improve the relationship that you have with yourself. So if there are aspects of ego that have come into what it is that you're trying to change for yourself, and that we've all been in situations where that's the case, then it could be that the removal of this forces us to look at ourselves and reassess you know, what we're trying to bring out into the world here. I mean, the King of Cups is there. And one of the things that I always say about the King of Cups is, like, there's nothing going to knock him off that throne. You know, he is completely emotionally stable there. He doesn't wear his heart on his sleeve. He doesn't let his emotions rule his mind. He recognises that his emotions are important, but they're not what he is. And it's mastery of these emotions that the King of Cups is generally speaking about here. Now... <clears throat> if the King of Cups is showing up sideways, right, he might not be getting washed off his throne, but he certainly is running the um, running the risk of falling off the throne because everything's turned 90 degrees, just as we see with the energy of the tower. And I, nobody's standing up, right? It's not that the tower's flipped everything 180, you're not going backwards, but you're certainly not going forwards anymore, you're going off sideways. And this, I feel, is going to throw a wrench in your particular situation because you have been so absolutely focused on your forward movement. Now, <coughs> I want to be clear. Like I said, the, the tower is always beneficial long term in terms of what it's, uh, what it, the, the kind of growth that it forces within us. Um, and often in the short term, that feels desperately uncomfortable. But there are as many opportunities for the tower to show itself that are 
short term extremely positive looking you know a surprise um, opportunity to apply, apply for a new job now yeah, a surprise um, promotion some sort of surprise improvement to your circumstances in some way or another actually sometimes when those towers come around they tend to be the ones that we trust a little less because we're like what the fuck i haven't worked for this where this where's this come from but there's something here that seems to be fundamentally rocking you to your emotional core and we you know we've seen that energy starting over here under the death card when the emotional foundation is also turning 90 degrees now it is abundantly clear to me capricorn that this month feels pivotal almost almost literally pivotal right we go from where we thought we were to suddenly everything's fucking 90 degrees of where we thought it were we thought things were and now we don't know what to do about it now my advice in this situation would always be surrender <clears throat> the likelihood of me taking that advice is somewhat less because i am still trying to learn that as an act myself but we have the queen of cups here we have the knight of swords and we have the seven of cups i think this is really really good advice capricorn for you because you've got the ten of swords now appearing at the bottom of the deck right and this is really leaning into this sense that this is taking away from you the opportunity to have exactly what it was that you thought that you wanted and being set upon a new path that is much more down the road emotionally fulfilling but it's not going to feel like that at this point now we've got the queen of cups the son of swords and the seven of cups here it is very very unlikely that in the short term you're going to be able to order your emotions around enough to be able to make sense of this because what is being challenged here what the universe is throwing its uh, throwing its towers around for is to challenge the very way that you have made sense of where it is that you are it could be that you've been in um in a situation where you've thought you've had some level of control over this right and that's made you feel happy and you've been working away on something but actually what might have been happening is that there's been a complete abuse of power here and you've been the recipient of it i mean i'll be honest capricorn it's it's possible that it's the other way around as well you know in both instances though what it's saying is that acceptance is key and more than that it isn't just about a state of acceptance it's about allowing yourself the space for things to be chaotic and uncertain because you don't have all of the information yet i would be very very careful in the words that you use this month right the ideas that you express i would be very very careful about expressing your anger out there into the world um, because if you ring that bell it's very difficult to come back from and it's also not paying attention to what the universe is trying to teach you at this time all right where it's trying to show you that things have gone wrong you know the queen of cups is is an incredibly passive card you know it's about acceptance it's about taking into oneself it's about pure receptivity queens are water in the tarot the mother of cups obviously is representing water so we have water of water we have literally the most watery state pure acceptance pure allowing right and i think that that's going to feel very challenging for you capricorn very challenging but it's really important really important that you realize that there's going to be uh, there's going to feel like there's an unquenchable need to express your displeasure and that likely you're going to be hitting out at all sorts of people and striking out at them 
possibly to blame them for the situation that's going on and you may be right or you may not but as much as anything else like you must be very very careful gentle loving and compassionate to yourself in light of whatever tower hits this month because it's only in that state that we can begin the process of allowing the dust of the tower to settle rather than continuing to kick it up and making sure that, you know, we're making things foggy for other people, but we're certainly not able to see very clearly ourselves either. Now, I'm going to go to the extended now. I'm going to dig into the energies of March deeper. So that's all of these energies here. And we're going to see if we can make some amount of sense of that. So if you would like to join me, you're very welcome to do so. You can do that on Vimeo. Or you can join up on Circle and uh, see it there. Um, there is also the three month overview, which might contextualize this a little bit across a period of time which might help you understand things that are going on a little bit more so if you'd like to kind of weave that into your understanding like i said the link is in the description box but if you don't want to do that that is fine just be aware that this is happening for you not to you and the more peacefully you can allow this tower energy into the picture the more swiftly the dust settles and we can start making sense of what has just occurred, but, but properly making sense of what has just occurred. So, know that I love you all very, very much. And I'll see you soon.